Amru ibn al-Hamiq al-Khuza'i was a companion of Rasulullah. He was a young man. Traditions say that one day he brought a cup full of milk and gave it to the Prophet. So the Prophet said to him, May Allah give you a youthful life. May you enjoy your youth. So they say that up until the time he departed this world, when he was in his 80s, right? He didn't have a single gray hair in his beard or hair. He was always ever vibrant, ever youthful because of the prayer of the Prophet. Then he joined Amir al-Mu'mineen. He witnessed all three major battles of the Imam during his khilaf. <clears throat> Jabal Sufri Nahrawan. And in each of those, he was a commander of one of the flanks. And he was also a member of what they call Sharitat al-Khamis, which was the central flank in any army. As it approached an enemy, you have a central flank. And the best of the best, the most elite forces stay there. It's like the tip of an arrow. Amr ibn al-Hamiq al-Khuza'i was there, Maytham al-Tamar was there, and others were there. So that's the, the category he was in. One day he comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen, I believe it was in Safi. He says to him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, Wallah ma tabi'atuk. Tama'an fi shay'in min hutam al-dunya. I didn't follow you because I have hope that you'll give me money or some position or anything like that. By God, I followed you because number one, anta akhu Rasulullah. Number two, wa anta a'azzu nasi alayh wa zawju al-batool wa walidu dhurriyatih al I followed you because you have the highest merits that anyone has had. I followed you because Rasulullah commanded us to follow you because he appointed you as his successor and heir. Then he said to the Imam, listen to this. He said, Ya Amir al Mu'min, Wallah an uzih al jibal al rawasi. To remove an entire mountain, rock by rock, I will do that. If you command me to empty out an ocean cup by cup, I will do it. Then ask me to take my sword and defend you and defend your followers to my last breath. Wallahi, I do not think I will have fulfilled my duty to you. Amir al Mu'minin said to him, هداك الله إلى صراطك ليت في شيعتي مئة مثلك. I wish I had a hundred like you. سلام الله عليه. And so that loyalty comes at a price. That level of proximity to the earth's core has to endure unimaginable pressure. As soon as Muawiyah signed the treaty with Imam Al Hasan. Part of which, one of the clauses of that treaty was what? That Muawiyah ceases to hunt down the companions of Amir al Mu'mineen. Stop killing my companions and my father's companions. Muawiyah, of course, broke this clause just like he broke every other clause. And the first thing he did when he became the undisputed ruler was he announced that Amr ibn al Hamiq al Khuza'i must be arrested, brought to him, dead or alive. He had this vendetta against him. Because he said, now whether that's true or not, is something we'll leave for another discussion, that Amr ibn al-Hamiq al-Khuza'i was in fact who killed Uthman ibn Affan. So Muawiyah said, I have heard that Amr said that I killed Uthman with nine knife stabs. Three, he said, I do this for God, and six, I do it out of the goodness of my heart. So he said, I want him arrested. So he went into hiding. They say that he went into hiding in Mosul, in Iraq's north. And so Muawiyah did what is exactly expected of Muawiyah. What the most vile creatures would do. He ordered the arrest of his wife. They threw his wife in jail. When Amr realized what had happened, he surrendered. When he surrendered, 
the governor of Mosul sent, sent a letter, a message to Muawiyah saying that I got Amr. He said, do not wait for a second. Slaughter him and send his head over to me. I don't want to see him alive. Kill him straight away. So they took Amr, slaughtered him. They placed his head on a lance, paraded it all the way from Iraq to Damascus. يُحْمَلُ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ That sunnah, that tradition, was established by none other than Muawiyah. That tradi tradition, which is now carried out by ISIS and every diabolical, maniacal terror group, was established by their leader and their master and their founder, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. It was the first head of a Muslim man. This never even happened during the reign of the other Khulafa, but Muawiyah did it. They brought his head over to Muawiyah. He said, you know what to do with this head? Take it to his wife. His wife is in prison. They take the head. She had no idea what had happened. She had no idea that they'd arrested Amr or anything like that. They came, opened the prison door, the cell door. They threw his head into his wife's lap. فَقَامَتْ وَفَزِعَتْ حَتَّى كَادَتْ أَن تموت. She almost died. Imagine the shock. Imagine the grief. She took the head, she kissed it. She said, you should know that you have just killed a man for whom I never laid the bed at night because he would spend every night in worship and in prayer. And I never laid a tablecloth for him during the day because he was always fasting in the days. This is the person you have killed. This is who you've murdered.